these matters are too complex just to say don't be deceived although we Jesus did say you know be not deceived he just didn't drop the matter there in other words it's not it's not in man uh, to direct his steps when a person is having if a person has issues with being deceived they're not going to be the ones to remedy their own condition because deception it, 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 things just don't things just don't work like that the you got a, a person has to be delivered from the domain of darkness and from the uh, from the wild the wiles of the devil and and these kind of things so I, I can say, I mean, this is part of the exhortation, be not deceived. But you can't just drop the issue there. It's more, it's more complex. There's, the need is greater than just be not deceived. Part of the reason for that is because some of the deception can reside in you. Jeremiah said that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Now, this is, this is the old heart. It's part of the, the old man, the old, the old nature, the, what we got from Adam. But the, the reality is it's still in you. That's, the, that's part of what we have to put off, putting off the old man and putting on the new man. So we, we are still within earshot of this, of this heart that is desperately wicked. And so if, see, with the, if the problem, if part of the source is in you, then it can't be enough just to say, be not deceived, and just leave it at that. There's three things that I want to reference in the exhortation to you tonight. One is found in 1 John 2.27. It says, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. So... <clears throat> He is, he's teaching them that they need no man to teach them. Have you ever thought about this? Yeah. In his teaching to them, he's saying, you have no need that any man teach you because of the anointing. The anointing teaches you of all things. So there's a, here, here's how that works out. There are some things that we can teach one another, and there are some things that you can't. There are some things only the Holy Spirit can teach. And that, that's, what, that's what he teaches. Now, in, a, in, in the ultimate reality, he's teaching us, he's teaching us all things. Because the, I can't give you anything but what the Holy Spirit's given me. And so ultimately, you don't receive it as the word of man. If, even if it came through me, you receive it as, as it is in truth, the word of God. And so ultimately, he's teaching all things. But th there's just, just, just a little peculiarity in here that he's teaching them that they have no need that any man teach them. But the reality is it all, it all comes from him. But the anointing teaches you of, of all things. Here's the evidence of that. And is truth and is no lie. Even, at his, even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Now I know there's a lot of things said today. You've heard them too about the anointing. What the anointing does. Who has the anointing. How you can see the anointing. And all the, the evidences of the anointing. Here's the evidence of the anointing. You abide in Christ. Even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in Him. No one who is abiding in Christ has this spurious assurance. Abiding in Him, um, it, 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 He protects you. See, that, that's, this is one of the, of the many glories of the new covenant, is that there, the benefits of the covenant are found in a man, not in a creed. That's that's why Babylon is so is so far is so far off, is that uh, it it majors on creeds and traditions and and institutions and things like systems and things like this programs and all of the benefits in the new covenant are found in a man. Even as it as the anointing has taught you, ye shall abide in in him. And um, there. The, thing, the things that we learn in Him can be, lo can be learned nowhere else. Amen. And so this is, this is the first uh, exhortation, is to, is to learn, learn from the anointing. And what a, what a 
uh, blessing it is to have this to, to judge ourselves. Even as you have learned, uh, as, it, as you have taught, been taught by the anointing, you abide in him. So we use that to, um, to judge ourselves. Secondly, in the book of Titus, uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 11, For the grace of God that bringeth, bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this, in this present world. Grace is a teacher. The anointing, which is, is uh, very, uh, I guess could, the anointing could be said to be the Holy Spirit, at least very closely associated with the Holy Spirit himself. Uh, but grace teaches. Grace is a teacher. Yeah. And grace teaches things that in, it, it teaches things that I couldn't, I couldn't learn anywhere else. Grace teaches that uh, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live righteously, soberly, and godly in this present world. Now, grace is not a lecturer. Grace is a teacher. Amen. Amen. Grace is not, uh, see, a lecturer can, is just like conveying information. It's just load you up, give your reading assignments, and, and then test you to make sure you read it. Grace doesn't teach like this. Grace doesn't teach from the blackboard. Grace teaches internally. Grace teaches in the heart, teaches in the mind, teaches in your, in your spirit. Grace teaches your conscience. Grace teaches what I, I dare say that grace is, is an effective teacher. Um, what a, so this is... Uh, protection against the, this spurious assurance is being being taught by grace. Amen. And lastly, in this messianic uh, text found in Isaiah uh, chapter nine that we all have have heard uh, so many times, that his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. That his name shall be called Counselor. And so he is a teacher. And he was known for teaching, even in this world. He was known, known for teaching. He did work miracles. And he had some, he had some fame uh, because of his miracles. But he was primarily known as a teacher. They, would, they expected him to be in the temple or in the synagogue teaching. They knew that he would be there because he was a teacher. He's a, a counselor. Um, the and this is a capital. This is a capital C. You know, he's called Lord of Lords, and so we could we could say that he's he's the counselor of all counselors, because we can uh, and we do teach and counsel one another. But we're we're all um, we're all sub counselors. We're all underlings to to this uh, counselor, and so the only the only protection in this. A grand scheme of of, of uh, deception and uh, spurious uh, falsities and all of these things that Brother Given has has mentioned tonight is that there is a wonderful counselor and that he he teaches uh, things that no one else uh, can teach. He teaches in a way that no one else uh, can can teach. Uh, so I'm I'm thankful for that. So the exhortation is to is to learn to be to take a, to take full advantage of all of these provisions. I I am glad that the provisions of the gospel indicate our need. So the fact that he's given us a counselor tells us that we need counsel. And so I exhort you to uh, to be a disciple of the counselor, to be a to be a learner and a and a hearer and a listener. Be like Mary and sit at the feet and let let the other things go on. Uh, around you uh, when he's counseling and when he's teaching. Amen. So we open up uh, now for anything.